And we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, our first hymn today is What Wondrous Love Is This? Today, we would be remiss if we did not acknowledge that the people of our nation will be celebrating Mother's Day despite the coronavirus. When we think of mothers, we remember the mother of our Lord. I often think of all that she went through, besides encountering the angel and being told she would have a child, innocent though she be, traveling on back of a donkey to Bethlehem as she was so close to giving birth that she did just that in a crude shelter. No doctor, no hospital, only the animals surrounding her. Then we hear very little about her from the scripture until her son is being crucified. Who can imagine what torture it was to witness that ghastly event of your son? We know that Jesus had love and concern for her. One of his last words was to John, the disciple, to care for her as if she were his mother too. I think often in our church, in an effort not to put anyone ahead of our Lord, we do not acknowledge her importance in Jesus' life and be grateful for that young girl who was obedient to our Lord. And so today we pray. Gracious, kind, and loving God, We thank you for Mary, the mother of Jesus, and we're thankful for all mothers and mother substitutes that love and care for children. Mothers care for the young. They teach them. They rock them. They sing to them. They read to them. Sit up with them when they're sick or colicky. And for some of us, it was a mother who was the first to tell us biblical stories and who took us to church. Even when they are grown and have families of their own, the children receive the blessings of the prayers that mothers continue to pray as they ask God to watch over their children, to keep them from the tempter's hands, and to bring them safely home to be with our Lord when their time comes. Lord, we thank you today and every day for mothers everywhere. Bless them as they have loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 7, verses 55 to 60. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears, yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Here ends the reading. The psalm this week is Psalm 31. 
In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Here ends the reading. The next reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 to 10. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. The Living Stone and a Chosen People As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, We don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father will be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. And we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This particular passage is often used at funerals. In fact, it's printed in the Lutheran book of occasional services 
and I've used it many, many times. Let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus' words. What could be more comforting than to have your Savior tell you those words? And I've shared with you many times how grateful I am to the disciples. Thomas himself epitomizes many of us some days. We just can't comprehend. There is so very much that even the most intelligent of our kind just don't know. We think we're in control. Ha! Hasn't that virus shown us that we're not at all? In a matter of days, the entire country is shut down and people are in their houses even when they don't want to be. We are not in control. Even houses of worship are closed. It reminded me of when I was in Russia and also China and passed by beautiful churches that were closed and were now used as warehouses. We have let a little virus close our churches. Let not your hearts be troubled. Thomas didn't know the way. Do we know the way? Are we listening to what our Lord is saying? He is the way, the truth, the life. He is life itself. No matter what happens, he has given us life. This world is not our home. We are only passing through. I wonder if that's why when some people refer to those who have died, they say they've passed or they've passed on. If you knew you had only months to live and were given the opportunity to give a lecture, what thoughts would you share? Would you recall a childhood incident that altered the course of your life? Would you share the guiding principles you learned on the athletic field or in the world of business? Would you talk about the music that makes your heart sore? Would you talk about the ways the love of your life enriched your journey? Would you tell about the importance of your faith? The times God gave you the strength to endure a tragedy? The challenge to forgive as you have been forgiven. The hope that this life is not all there is. What would you say? This gospel for day, today, is part of Jesus' last lecture to his 12 disciples in an upper room in a house in Jerusalem. He asked them, don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living me who is doing his work, says Jesus. Jesus makes it plain that after all this, we should know him. I think back to our previous week's example of Lazarus and the rich man, and I hope that you read the passage in John 16 as suggested. The fact that we all have the scriptures and the prophets. Do we believe them? Do we heed them? Or do we cast them off as written long ago and not relevant? I ask you, is this virus a plague? Physicians have referred to it thus. Did God send the plagues on the Egyptians thousands of years ago? Seems as those things are relevant today and can happen quickly as we've learned. Still, let not your heart be troubled. It's interesting to me how people read of historical facts and people from Greek times, Roman times, the Vikings, the Prits, and believe it all. If you have opportunity to visit these places, you will see that the inhabitants cherish their history and believe those facts. Yet there are many who believe those facts, but will comment that the Bible and Jesus were so long ago they're irrelevant. Check your dates. Jesus came after the Greeks. And at the time, Rome was about to decline. Yet people regard that as too old to be relevant. Really? Along with the Bible, we have historical records that also reinforce that data. Think about the comments public figures make about themselves in our own time and culture. 
Wasn't it Muhammad Ali, the boxer, who was fond of saying, I'm the greatest? For a brief period of time in the limited context of professional boxing, that may be true. If he was claiming to be the greatest person who ever lived, we immediately recognize his delusion. An early 20th century author, Azora Neale Hurston, said, Sometimes I feel discriminated against, but it does not make me angry. It merely astonishes me. How can anyone deny themselves the pleasure of my company? It's beyond me. Unquote. Even this kind of talk about one's self is ridiculous, if not uttered tongue-in-cheek. In this Gospel of John, we encounter eight statements that Jesus made specifically, making outrageous statements about himself. He claims that he is these things. The implications reach deep into our real daily lives. It involves life-changing transformation with everlasting consequences. They're called the I Am Statements, and I'm just going to tell you the chapters you can find them in. In 6, Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. In 8, I am the light of the world. And he also says, before Abraham was, I am. In 10, I am the door, and I am the good shepherd which we heard last week. In 11, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And in today's gospel, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And finally, in 15, he says, I am the true vine. These eight explicit self-evaluation comments by Jesus at that time, in that place, in that culture, would have had a much more obvious meaning and impact to their ears, much as everything Jesus said in all these parables. Yet, 2,000 years later, these statements remain powerful and provocative. We Christians of today must be thankful for those who were diligent in recording the events of the earthly life of Jesus. And how can anyone look at this world and the wonders of creation, the new life of plants, the intricate body of humans and animals and how they work and not believe there is a God or a force for those of you would use that word, a creator, more intricate than any program we can create. Then think of the words of Jesus. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves and then hold fast to his words do not let your hearts be troubled believe amen amen our next hymn is about homes happy the home where god is there Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all people. Build us up, God, as building stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is set forth to proclaim your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God as part of your creation, 
Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made and everything in it. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those in need and protecting all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by the troubles of this world, especially at this time of illness across the globe. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry out their burdens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the parents who provide and love them. Today, we especially remember mothers and those who have shown mothering care. Continue to guide, protect, and strengthen them as they care for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Comfort those who mourn and give us faith to hold to the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. We allow silence for the petitions of those of you at home. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we pray for all whom we pray. And we place them in your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn for today is, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Let not your heart be troubled. Thanks be to God.